Today I have for you the brand new Nike Mercurial Superfly 6. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Nike Mercurial Superfly 6 Elite. This is the sixth generation of Nike Mercurial Superfly and I'm pretty confident in saying that this is probably the best Superfly that Nike has ever put out. It also retails for $275 making it the most expensive model in the new Mercurial lineup. $25 more than the Vapor 12 but $25 less expensive than the previous generation Superfly 5 which is definitely a good thing. We're going to compare it to the Superfly 5 as well as the Vapor 12 in today's video, talk tech specs, performance features, as well as take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you want to learn everything there is to know about the brand new Superfly, please stick around and watch the entire video. And if you're interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $275 $5 retail price. Now, if you're following Nike on social media, you know that they're referring to the new Vapor and the new Superfly as the Superfly 360 and Vapor 360. And if you look closely on the Superfly, it does actually say Superfly 360 on the boots themselves. However, if you take a closer look at the box, which I have right here, it's gonna have the size now with the women's equivalent along with the men's size, and it has the name Superfly 6 Elite. So technically there are two official names for this new generation of Mercurials, whether you're talking about the Vapor or the Superfly, both names are correct. But for me, just based on what's easier to remember and kind of following the lineage of this line, I'm gonna be referring to it as the Superfly 6. Also included inside the box with the boots is a string bag. Here's the strings, here's the bag. So we're now on the sixth generation of Mercurial Superfly and really what this line has always represented for me is Nike introducing cutting edge technology, something that we've never seen before. And while I don't think that this Superfly 6 is the biggest leap forward that we've seen from the Superfly line, I can honestly say that I do think this is the best Superfly Nike has ever made. I've worn every single one from one to six. So if you missed out on the early ones, one, two, or three, honestly, don't feel bad because those were really stiff shoes, really difficult to get a comfortable fit out of and just break in in general. I know some people did have them and really, really like them, but they were extremely expensive, but definitely important in terms of the technology that they introduced to the soccer cleat world. When Nike brought it back with the Superfly 4 being the first fly knit mid-cut boot to market along with the Magista Obra 1, that shoe I thought was really good. It wasn't perfect, but it was extremely well received. And I think that really paved the way for what we're seeing now, not just from Nike, but from other brands as well. The Superfly 5 was a step in the right direction, but not quite the same as the Superfly 4. There were things that I thought were better. There were things that I thought were not quite as good. And then with the Superfly 6, I feel like the shoe has now reached a level of refinement with this flying technology and the mid cut aspect. That is better than we've ever seen before from the line. Let me explain why. Starting off with the upper, I think one thing that people didn't really like coming from Superfly 4 to Superfly 5 is that Nike made the Superfly 5 fly knit upper thicker, more padded, not necessarily to the point where the shoe felt bulky or anything like that, but it wasn't as thin as the fly knit upper found on that original Superfly 4. I'm happy to report that the Superfly 6 upper is more like that of the Superfly 4 in terms of its overall thickness. It's their new 360 degree fly knit upper that obviously wraps along the bottom of the shoe. This really has nothing to do with the feel or touch on the ball though. It's more so just an aesthetics thing. That's the main reason why I think they did it. However, the upper itself is extremely kind of tight in terms of the way that they knitted it. It's very well reinforced. It's very, very structurally sound despite not having any flywire cables. This is the first ever Superfly to not feature Brio cables or flywire. From one to five, they all had that. So that's an interesting choice. However, the internal lining material is there to reinforce the entire upper of this particular shoe. And really, if we're comparing it to anything from Nike in the past, it's a very similar upper construction to what we saw on that limited edition release in the form of the Nike Mercurial Vapor Flyknit Ultra. So in that regard, I think if you're a fan of the Flyknit Superfly series, this is the best Flyknit upper that we've ever gotten on a Superfly period. Going into more detail on the upper, this Flyknit upper is completely flat and much thinner than what we got 
on the Superfly 5, which obviously had the speed rib texturing running across the entire shoe, adding a lot of thickness that honestly I didn't think added to the experience of that shoe. Yes, it made the upper feel a little bit softer, but in terms of touch on the ball, that Superfly 5 is arguably the thickest mercurial that Nike has ever put out. Not necessarily a bad thing, but personally from a mercurial model, I would want something as thin as possible. And this is definitely the thinnest of all the Flyknit Mercurial Superflies that Nike has ever put out. You will find that it does have a Nike skin covering as we've seen from pretty much every Flyknit based shoe from the Nike brand. Although the Nike skin this time around is just extremely thin and very, very well done on the upper. You almost can't see where it starts and where it ends. You're also gonna find that there is some texturing here in the form of what is basically these little lines that raise off the upper running the length of the shoe rather than directly across. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we saw from the speed ribs, but a lot more minimal and honestly something that doesn't add any kind of thickness to the upper. It's there more so I think for the sake of aesthetics. You don't really notice it on the ball either. And then of course the last part of the upper is going to be Nike's ACC All Conditions Control Technology, your wet control element that honestly I don't think does anything, but they do include it on all their top end models. Now, just like the Superfly 4 and 5, the upper is one piece across the top of the foot. It transitions from structured flying it into elasticated flying it where the laces are positioned. And of course that elasticated flying it extends into the collar area as well. Something we'll talk about in just a second. It also uses a dual lace hole system to allow you to get a proper amount of lockdown once you have these shoes on your feet really does a good job despite not having flywire cables. Once you tie the laces tight, keeping your foot nice and secure inside of the shoe and really giving you that second skin wrap when the shoes are on your feet. That's really what the Mercurial line is all about. And I really do feel like this is the best fitting Superfly of the Flyknit era. Now the rear of the shoe is really where you're going to find the only difference between the Superfly 6 and Vapor 12. The shoe itself in the heel features internal plastic heel counter, so similar to what we've seen on previous Flyknit Superflies, but the construction of this heel is completely different. It's actually modeled off of what we originally saw on the Flyknit Ultra, which was obviously a low cut shoe, but this is a mid. To give you guys a better idea of exactly what's happening here, here's a look at the Vapor 12. Exact same construction, exact same fit and shape in the heel. And you're gonna notice that because it's low cut, you do have this little extension piece of Flyknit running along the edge as kind of like a mini collar, but it just ends to make sure that the shoe is low cut. There's nothing that needs to extend from here, but it could very well be extended if they just added more material. And that is essentially what they've done with the collar here on the Superfly 6. So unlike the Superfly 4 and Superfly 5, that changed the fit of the heel to allow for that mid cut design. This fits like a standard low cut shoe, meaning that you're really not gonna have any kind of weird tightness or weird rubbing across the back of your Achilles tendon that causes blisters, that causes discomfort during the break-in process for the Superfly 4, the Superfly 5, and really many of the mid-cut shoes from Nike that we've seen up until this particular point. This is the only shoe that's mid-cut that has more of a true low cut construction, which from a comfort standpoint, I definitely think is a good thing. As far as the collar itself is concerned, obviously it's different from what we saw on the Superfly 5, mainly in the fact that it's shorter. It's still made from the same elasticated flying material, very, very stretchy, but instead of ending it right about here, it ends obviously a lot lower. It's kind of more the middle of the ankle rather than slightly above the ankle. And this is something that Nike has said is modeled off of the custom collar that Cristiano Ronaldo has been wearing on the Superfly 4 and Superfly 5 for the last four years. I think it's an interesting idea. I don't really have any issues with the collar being a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. I don't think it makes for that big of a difference in terms of feel when you're wearing the shoes. To me, once you get used to any of these mid-cut models from Nike, you just don't notice the collar at all. It's elasticated sock material. So basically, it's not really adding any ankle support. It's not really restricting movement in any way. It's more so for the sake of looks. And talking about looks, I don't really care for this little extension piece on the front when you're talking about the mid-cut version. I think on the Vapor, it looks cool because it kind of reminds me of the little flap that we used to see on the older Mercurial Vapors. On the Superfly, I just think the little flap is kind of strange looking, although it is nice that you have something to hang on to when you're actually putting the shoes on. It just makes them a little bit easier. Also something worth noting is that the opening does seem to be a little bit bigger 
on this collar than what we've seen in the past from the Nike brand. So just to answer the question whether or not it's worth spending $275 on the Superfly 6 rather than $25 less at $250 on the Vapor 12, it really is a matter of personal preference. If you're asking about performance gains because of the collar, there aren't any. There's no benefit to having the collar versus the shoe being low cut. However, what a lot of people do like about mid-cut shoes, whether it's from Nike or other brands, is that because it does fit more closely around your ankle, it can help to keep artificial grass pellets, those little rubber things, from getting inside of the boots. Although this is the firm ground variation of the shoe and you shouldn't be wearing it on artificial grass. The other reason why you'd buy a mid over a low is just because you like the way that it looks. But in terms of feel this time around, Honestly, there is no difference in fit and feel in the heel area between the Vapor 12 and the Superfly 6. I personally would just prefer the shoes to be low based on feel as well as looks, but again, it really is down to personal preference and whether or not you're willing to spend that extra 25 bucks. Internally, you'll find that the shoe is lined in a synthetic suede material with some perforations. The perforations are there more so just for the sake of looks than anything, but it's got a decent amount of padding back there. And again, the construction of the heel is that of a low cut shoe. So in terms of out of the box comfort, Huge improvements over the Superfly 4 and 5. The insole is, of course, fully removable. Here's a look at it. It's the same insole that you find on the Vapor 12. It has their Nike Grip liner, which is basically a mesh material that is supposed to be special, but honestly just feels very, very normal. I really wouldn't buy too much into that particular technology. And the insole has been changed up coming from the previous generation of Superfly 5 and Vapor 11 and that it's no longer that ortholite material that I did see some people having issues with with it getting chewed up. This is a much more rugged, durable foam. It's got a good amount of density to it as well and it's really just not gonna break down like the old one did, but you'll find that there's a little black insert of foam right here in the midfoot with an interesting pattern pressed into it. That pattern is actually found on the base of the footbed itself. So the sole plate that runs across the entirety of the bottom of the shoe, yes, it's a split sole, but there is still a sole plate. I'll explain in just a second, but that pattern is actually on the base of the sole plate. So the idea is that the pattern also mimicked here on the bottom of the insole kind of locks into place and it prevents the insole from sliding around on the inside of the shoe. Is it that effective? Yes but at the same time, it's not necessarily something that I think makes for that big of a deal in terms of performance change or performance benefit. The idea here is to be as responsive as possible. And if the insole is sliding around, regardless of how good the shoe fits, you're gonna lose out on some of that responsiveness. So this is designed to prevent any kind of insole slippage. It's hard to say that it's having that big of a difference. I've worn shoes that don't have this technology and the insole doesn't slide, but it is definitely a cool idea. And for those wondering about replacing this particular insole for something else that doesn't have this pattern, you can absolutely do that. It's not going to affect the fit inside of the shoe whatsoever. Another first for the Superfly line is the split sole construction, which like I just explained, there is still a sole plate running through the middle of what looks like just the upper material. The midfoot is not just made out of flyknit. When you try to bend the shoe, the midfoot is actually the strongest point and that's because it still maintains the anatomic shaped sole plate that we saw on the Superfly 5 and Vapor 11. The difference is instead of tucking underneath that sole plate and it being on the outside, the upper wraps around the sole plate, it acts as a base inside of the shoe and then they put a stud plate on top in the forefoot as well as in the heel. This is not necessarily new technology. Older Mercurial Vapors used to have this. We've seen this from older Predator models as well. It's not something that's brand new, but it definitely does offer an interesting look and a different way of basically doing the exact same thing. So it's not really better or worse in my opinion. It's just something that's a little bit different. And from a look standpoint, I actually think it looks really, really cool. If they're not gonna give us carbon fiber, I think this looks better. Although it's an interesting direction in that what they really preached on the previous generation of Mercurials with that Nike plate anatomically shaped sole plate is that it was only a single layer of materials and less layers would make for lighter weight. This offers more layers, does weigh a little bit more, but still feels pretty well the same. There isn't really any significant weight increase coming from the Superfly 5 to the Superfly 6. So it's still anatomically shaped. You still feel that when you're actually wearing the shoe. It's not really stiff. It's got a good amount of flexibility to it and does definitely break in really nicely as well. And then as far as the stud plate is concerned, a lot of people are concerned about the traction based on a couple pros slipping in them while wearing them on TV. Uh, this is the exact same firm ground stud pattern that we saw on the previous generation of Mercurials. Nothing has changed at all. It's still the Chevron bladed studs. Very, very aggressive in terms of overall bite. 
And again, unchanged from the previous generation. I thought the Superfly 5 and Vapor 11 offered the most aggressive traction on the market. So therefore the new Superfly 6 and Vapor 12 and really the whole new Mercurial line having the same stud pattern, I still feel exactly the same way. Now, of course, this is a Mercurial, so the weight is extremely important. And given all the changes they've made coming from the Superfly 5, are these lighter? Are they heavier? Are they about the same? Well, on a scale in a size 9.5 US, the Superfly 6 weighs in at seven ounces exactly, which if we're comparing it to the Superfly 5 in the same size, is pretty much the exact same weight, give or take 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ounces, which honestly you're not gonna notice on your feet whatsoever. Weight wise, it's pretty much unchanged from the previous generation, not quite as light as what you'll get from the Vapor 12 this time around. And the reason for the extra weight is simply the extra material you have because of the collar. So if you strip the collar away, the Vapor 12 ends up weighing about 0 0.4 ounces less, which again, I would argue is not really a noticeable amount of weight on your feet. So if you are trying to decide between the Superfly 6 and the Vapor 12, I really don't think weight should be the deciding factor. Both of them are gonna feel very lightweight on your feet. Now, if you've been on social media over the last week or so, you've probably heard people complaining about the look of these new Mercurials. And a lot of people are complaining about the colorway, but honestly, Bright orange is something we've seen from the Mercurial line plenty of times before. The issue I think most people have here is just the graphics that they've used that make the shoe look kind of like big orange socks, especially in the mid-cut Superfly form factor. You have a Nike swoosh here at the front, which is kind of new territory for a Mercurial. We're used to seeing something at the toe, but it kind of splits at the toe and goes along the outside of the shoe. This is just basically an orange sock from the side profile. From the outside, the medial side has a nice big Nike swoosh that runs in the middle. Had that been on the outside, I think the shoes would have looked a lot cleaner overall. But of course, we're used to Nike kind of switching around the graphics with future colorways. So I'm sure that's something they're gonna do at some point in time. The big M on the heel, I know not everyone's a huge fan of it. I personally don't have too many problems with it. You can see it has this kind of rainbow effect to it as the light hits it, which is kind of a cool little detail. And it does have the Mercurial branding there as well. The collar I think looks really weird off feet, but when they're actually on feet, it honestly does not look all that bad. It's got some neon yellow accenting there on the inside, although you don't see it when you're actually wearing the shoes. The laces are also orange along with the rest of the upper with a little bit of kind of like a gold multicolor changing ribbon in there. Uh, the laces themselves, honestly, they're a little bit cheap, very loose weave, and they actually fray really easily, which is, an interesting decision, but that's what they've done. You've got your Flyknit ACC branding here on the medial side as well. And then of course the split sole construction, which some people really don't like the look of. I don't quite understand that. I think this looks pretty cool. Definitely better than the sole plate we got on the Superfly 5. And it has this interesting kind of oil slick multicolor effect to it on both the heel as well as the forefoot, which does come with a warning sticker. I've already peeled it off, letting you know that this is a wearable finish. Uh, so expect this finish to kind of chip away slowly as you wear them. What color is underneath? I would assume that it's black, but I'm not 100% sure. The shoes just came out. So we haven't really seen any well-worn Superflies or Vapors yet because the finish is the same on both shoes. Overall, I don't think that the shoe is horrible looking, uh, at least not as bad as people are making it out to be but it's definitely not the best looking Superfly that Nike has ever released. So as you can see, I swapped out the stock orange laces for some black reflective SR40 replacement laces, which I think look better. Obviously it accents nicely with the black parts you have on the upper, but it also kind of breaks up the design of the shoe because you don't have anything on the outside. They kind of look like weird orange socks. This makes them look a little bit less weird to me. So if you are interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, I think the Superfly 6 might be the most comfortable Superfly ever in terms of feel out of the box. And that has a lot to do with the construction of the heel area, basically being that of a low cut shoe rather than the same general cut and feel that we got from the Superfly 4 and Superfly 5, where a lot of people, including myself, simply had issues out of the box in regards to rubbing against the back of the heel. It just fit in such a way that wasn't the most comfortable, especially at first. This doesn't have that at all. You don't really feel the collar either. I think if you're used to wearing mid-cut Nike shoes at this point, these are gonna feel very familiar in terms of the collar itself. It's just the heel is gonna be a lot more comfortable from the get-go, which is definitely a good thing. A lot of people have commented that this does not have any flywire cables. When you tie the laces tight, given the type of upper that they've done here, the construction of everything, the shoes feel very secure, very locked in, and the way that they wrap your foot, I would say, is really comfortable as well. Again, the upper has more of a feel of that of the Superfly 4, 
rather than the Superfly 5 if we're comparing it to previous Superfly models. As far as fit is concerned, obviously it's a Mercurial, obviously it's a Superfly, so it's gonna have a very, very tight fit. But in comparison to the Superfly 5, these do have a little bit more width to them through the midfoot area, but especially in the forefoot and toe box area, although it still maintains its very low profile general construction. So there's really no extra volume on the inside of the shoe. And for the most part, it has that super tight wrap. I actually prefer the way these fit over the Superfly 5. It's equally as good in terms of just wrapping your foot very closely like a second skin, but I find them more comfortable as well, which is ultimately very important too. So as far as sizing is concerned, I would say sizing is about the same as previous generation Mercurials. My foot is about a nine and a quarter, so I generally end up going up a half size to a nine and a half rather than a nine US, but the fit is pretty much perfect. And if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, sizing is the same as previous generation Mercurials. I'd recommend going true to size for the best possible fit. So to sum up the Superfly 6, despite the way it looks, you could make a strong argument that this is the ugliest Superfly Nike has ever made. I think from a performance standpoint, the materials, the way that this shoe fits, I think it's the best Superfly Nike has ever made. The upper feels really good. The fit of the shoe has been tweaked in such a way where I find these much more comfortable and just to fit really nice in comparison to the Superfly 5, not to say those fit poorly. I just think these fit that much better. I really like the collar this time around and the construction and the heel. That's a lot more comfortable for me, both out of the box as well as once the shoes are broken in. You still get the anatomic shaping and it still maintains the exact same stud pattern as well. So traction is obviously very, very good. And the shoe as a whole is also extremely responsive, nice and light as well. So there isn't too much to complain about here aside from the looks. So what I'm getting at is if you can get past the looks of the shoe and you're a fan of the Superfly series, I think this is definitely the Superfly that you want to buy because it's the best one Nike has ever made. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review. Again, if you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up up below their normal $275 retail price. If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions, as always, leave those down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching.